Hi, and welcome to another Data to Dashboard video with BI with Gurpreet. My name is Gurpreet, and my mission is to help train and empower people like you with life-changing data skills. In this particular video, we're going to learn all about customer churn analysis, what it is, how to perform it, and how to create a dashboard in the same respect that can be used by the business users to make informed decisions and form the strategies to improve the customer churn rate. I have provided a link to the exercise files in the video description so you can follow along and create your own version of this dashboard and add it to your portfolio of projects for Power BI. So without further ado, let's get started. So first things first, let's understand what is customer churn analysis. Now every business has customers and not all customers remain with the business forever. Customers come and go. The rate at which customers leave a business against the total customers they have is called rate of loss of customers or churn rate. And it's also sometimes referred to as customer attrition. So what we do in customer churn analysis is look at this churn rate against various factors and find what could be the main contributing factors in increasing this churn rate and then the business users can use that knowledge, that insight, that information to make informed decisions and to strategize about how to reduce this churn rate. And that is the main goal of customer churn analysis. And that's what we're going to do in this particular video. So let's get started and now look at our raw data. So here we are looking at the raw data. So we have raw data in the form of a CSV file. This data is for the customers of a bank and we have 10,000 rows of worth of data here. And we have various factors here in terms of their credit score, which country they belong to, the gender, the age, the tenure, so how long they have been with bank or they were with bank, their balance, and the, this is the account balance, the product number, so which particular product. So there are, looks like a few different products, one, two, three, four, uh, whether they had a credit card or not, whether they were active, they're active uh, members or not. So whether they do any transactions or they just there as a customers that but don't often uh, do any transactions. What's their estimated uh, salary? Uh, this is the annual salary and whether the customer was churned. What that means is whether they are still a customer or they left. So one indicates a customer which has left the bank and zero is which is still an existing customer. So now you should be familiar with the raw data that will be you will be working with. And I'll recommend that you always do this. Look at the raw data and understand each and every column what it involves in there. If you don't have that information, you should go and ask the business users where the data is coming from if there's no data dictionary available. So the very, very important step before you actually do anything with the data is to understand it so that you can make a decision which data is important for your analysis, which is relevant for it, which is not relevant. So make sure you always familiarize yourself with the raw data before you actually start working with it, with it, before you do any sort of data preparation. So now you should be well familiar with this data where that we have for 10,000 customers from a bank. And now let's look at how we will import this into the Power BI model using Power Query Editor, and also look at how we will prepare it, how we will clean it, prepare it, transform it, reshape it to make it ideal and ready for data modeling and data analysis and visualization. So let's jump in onto the desktop again. I've got Power BI desktop open here. So the first step is that we want to bring the raw data into Power BI. For that, we have to use the relevant connector. So get data. This is the one place where we can go to, to connect to any relevant data source. And Power BI provides really powerful connectors for more than 170 different types of data sources. In this case, our source is a CSV file, so we need the text CSV data connector. Just click there. And I have kept my data here in my downloads folder, and I've also provided a link to the CSV file in the video description. You can download and practice along. So once we do that, we see this preview of the data. This is Western European data, so we understand the countries here, France, Spain, Germany. So yes, it's Western European data, comma delimited file, which is correct. And we are looking at 
uh, data type detection based on first 200 rows. So that is fine. I think we will leave everything at default, but we do want to work on preparing the data. So we're going to click on transform data that will launch Power Query Editor. If you were happy with the data, you could just press load and start working at analysis of the data. But here we do want to work with the data. So we're going to click transform data. And once we do that, here we can see we have Power Query Editor, which opens in its own window. So behind us, there is the Power BI desktop and this is the Power Query Editor. So that's launched in its own window. And we can see we have one query, which is the data that we pulled by connecting to the CSV file. First things first, I'm going to just change the name of this uh, query to customer data. Okay, that's great. Now always keep an eye on this applied steps window. So whatever transformations we do, whatever steps we perform here in terms of preparing our data, there will be an applied step created here. And it's always good to keep this clean and organized wherever possible. And at the top here, we have the formula bar. So anything that we do generates an M code automatically for this applied steps. And that code can be viewed here and also can be edited as well. So here in this case, we connected to the source data. These headers were promoted automatically. So and then the data types were changed and applied as well. I'm going to remove this change type and I'm also going to remove this promoted headers. So this is how it came through. So this source step is by default will always be there. And then it has got this gear icon there. So you can change the setting. You can connect to a different file and do all those things from here. You can change the region and whatever. So that's there in terms of the setting. Any step which has a gear icon, that means you can click on the gear icon and then change the settings for that particular step. So that's the source step. So the very first step we want to do is promote this first row as headers. And the way to do it is by going to the home tab, just click here, use row as headers. And there we have it. Now, once I all have this, I it's still done the change type automatically. I'm going to remove that for now. Now, once this happens, I always look at my data and just to give myself a bit more space, I'm going to minimize this queries window here or queries pane. So I've got a bit more working area here with my data. So now always look at if there is any data that I really don't need, which is not relevant for my particular analysis. It's always better to reduce your data as much as possible. So in this case, customer's ID, yes, we want to keep it unique ID. The credit score could be a factor, the country, location, so gender, the age, and then the tenure, the balance, uh, product number, the credit card, whether they had a credit card or not, active member or not, estimated salary. Now this is not real salary, this is estimated salary. Because we already have the account balance, we're going to remove this factor from here for now. And the way to do it is just right click on here and click remove. And when we do that, you can see here the removed columns uh, step has been added. Now you can also do is you can right click here and rename it and change it to removed estimated salary. So now it's more meaningful for us. And you can see here the M code for it, where it says table dot remove columns. Uh, this comes after the promoted header step and the column we removed is estimated salary. Okay, that's great. Now, another thing I do is always look at the column names and if they are meaningful and if I need to edit them. So I'm going to just make them a bit more friendly so that when they show up in our visualizations, they're more meaningful. So customer ID. This is credit score. Country. Gender, if I can spell it correctly age, tenure. So this is how long the customer has been with the bank or was with the bank before they left. Uh, account balance. So uh, then we have next column, which is product number. We can just say product. 
credit cards. Active and churn status. Okay, so now our column names are more meaningful for us. Next thing you want to do is now look at the data types and apply the relevant data types. So customer ID is looks like this is a numeric field so we don't have any alphabets in it so I'm going to just change it to whole number the credit score is a number again so whole number the country is uh, uh, basically alphanumeric so it's text so uh, text is fine gender is also text and also keep an eye on the different types of values in there. So this is a categorical variable and we have male and female, so no misspellings or anything like that as well. Also look at the country as well and you can load more so that you see all the values, all the data and that's, yes, that's all fine as well. Age, um, and you might be noticing, I'm seeing this chart, bar chart here at the bottom. So because in my view options, I've got column profile ticked here. So by doing that, what I'm doing, what I'm able to do is I'm able to look at the stats here. So I'm just going to turn this off for now. So it's not distracting and I'll come back to this in a minute. So customer age is, we know it's a whole number. The tenure is also a whole number. The balance is uh, in currency. So fixed decimal number is the format that is used here in Power BI desktop. Next we have the product. Now product is again whole number. It's a product number, credit card. We have one and zero, whole number, active. We have uh, here again whole number. Churn status is also one and zero, so we have it whole number. So those are the sort of data types. Now we have looked at and prepared our data from that perspective. Next things you want to look at is that here, say if I bring in this um, product, one, two, three, four, it won't make any sense if I prepare a bar chart by where I'm looking at different products, just saying one, two, three, four, maybe I should change this to uh, product one, product two, product three, product four, so on and so forth. So there are various ways of doing it. Easiest way is to look at add column and add a column by example. And here I'm going to say prod, let's say prod one. Then here it's already picked up because I already had the product column selected. So it's picked up that it's based on one, two, three, four. I just want to prefix with it prod and that's done a pretty good job. So that's there. I'm going to call it products. Okay. Now, this column, do we still need it? We really don't need it now. So I, I'm going to remove this basically. So now we want to do the same thing for credit card. Let's change the name of this column to credit card status. And what I want to do is I want to say whether it's uh, they have they own a credit card or not own basically. So here, wherever it's one, we want to say owned. Wherever it's zero, we want to say it is not owned. So that means we're going to change this into a text column because those are text values. So this is another way of doing this, especially if you don't have too many values. So in this case, what I'm going to do is first to change the data type to text and then right click here and then say replace values. So I want to replace the one with owned and then again, right click, replace values and I want to change the own zero with not owned. Okay, so there we go. That's another way of doing the same thing. Now, similarly, active. So, uh, so here maybe we can say status activity status. Let's rename the column. And again, it's just one and zero, so it's easier to do this way. So just change it to text, right click, and then replace values. Wherever it says one, it is active. 
and wherever again right click replace values and wherever it is zero not active or inactive let's say inactive makes more sense so there we have it now churn status a similar thing one and zeros let's change it to text and we want to say wherever it is one we want to right click replace change it to change the ones to churned and right click replace values and where zero which means not churned so not churned so there we have it so we have converted our those numbers into some sort of meaningful information if we were to create charts from it okay next thing we want to do is now we have all this um say age here for all these customers and now i'm going to go to view and click on column profile by doing that what happens is here at the bottom i can see the stats so here there are 60 distinct values eight unique values and also it gives me minimum and maximum so minimum age is 18 maximum age is 82 okay so now we know the minimum and maximum it will be meaningful and useful to categorize our data so group these ages into some sort of category say less than 20 between 20 and 30 30 and 40 so on and so forth and create some age categories so that then we can analyze this data around those instead of looking at all these distinct age values not very meaningful way of analysis analyzing it for that what we do is we go to add column so make sure your age column is selected and create a conditional column okay let's call this age groups okay this is based on age and if it is less than or equal to 20 which will cover anything between 18 and 20 we will say less than 20 okay next add another clause and follow the same method so anything which is less than or equal to 30 is 21 to So there we have our categories or age groups so nicely done you can see you drop down load more as well we have all these categories so less than 20 and so on and so forth similarly we need to create categories for uh, the credit score maybe because again credit score has so many values uh, 354 distinct values so if you want to do any analysis around it won't be meaningful again we have the minimum which is 376 and the maximum which is 850 so we can now group this into some sort of categories and create credit score groups so right click add column uh, tab and click on conditional column let's call it credit score let's say credit just credit scores basically and select the credit score here and we say is less than so if it is less than 400 then we will say 0 to 400 add a clause or maybe let's just say less than because it takes up less space so let's say less than 400 and then if we have credit score of less than or equal to 500 then it is 400 to 500. Uh, let's change this to less than equal to. And this is less than equal to. This becomes 500. So this is from 401 to 500 don't want the categories to overlap as well that's also something you have to always keep in mind so no overlapping should be there so this one is from 501 to 600 
600. So there we have it, press OK. And we have the credit scores as well in some sort of groupings, meaningful groupings here. Let's look at any other data that we need to group. So here we have country, we have gender, age we have already done, tenure, uh, let's see what the sort of values are there in tenure column. So we have 11 distinct values, and the minimum is zero, maximum is 10, so zero, one, two, three, four, so it's, it's just distinct values up to 10, so it's not too many values, let's, let's leave it like that. Now the balance column, again, we have minimum of zero, and a maximum of 213,146. So that's a huge range. And there are 650 distinct values. Again, if we want to do any analysis around the account balance, then it's better to create some groupings here as well. So again, we are going to create a conditional column and call it account balance. And here refer to the balance column and if it is equals zero let's call it zero because you know we want to look at distinct wherever this balance is zero and next one we say is less than or equal to 1000 it is so one to one K Last but not the least, we now wrap up by saying anything greater than 200,000. So, and then see here, greater than 200K. So there we have our categories for account balance. And let's look at the data types for these uh, columns where we have created these groups. So uh, these are all should be text because we have the dash in there. So Make sure you change those to text data type and always try and group your steps together. So in terms of changing this data type, we're gonna change it in one go for all three columns so that we only have one uh, step added here in the applied steps for that change of data type. And it shows us which columns we changed for and what type we changed to. So that is that looks pretty good in terms of now analyzing our data preparing it here the i think data is in good clean state and we have done enough preparation now another thing you want to look at is when you actually start creating charts so suppose i'm creating charts for age groups okay now if i was to arrange this in ascending order you can see here the way it's arranged let's actually look at the drop down here and load more and here you can see if it is ascending or is starting with 21 to 30, whereas the first category is less than 20. So these will never be because of the way we have used symbols. It's difficult to arrange them in some sort of order here and it's text values. So it's always better to create a separate table for these groups and add a column that can be then used for um, sort of reordering these and uh, arranging these values in some sort of order. So. The way to do it is we go right click here so i've just expanded the queries pane right click on the uh, query here customer data query and say reference okay now what happens is all the previous steps were already applied and we just got the end result from there and now first things first let's just change this to age groups Okay, and the only column we want to keep from this data is the age groups column. So just right click and say remove other columns and this will remove all the other columns. And next, just make sure this column is selected. Go to the home tab and here say remove rows and say remove duplicates. And there we go, there we go. We have the unique values here for the age groups. Now we need to create an index column, but 
if we just pick and add uh, so add column if i just go here and index add an index column from one two three four five six it's based on how it's sorted here which will never be right so that's not what we want to do what we have to do is we have to again because this is a sort of custom sorting we are doing here so we have to say here um, age and groups id okay and this based on age groups equals and we just have to now go through each and every value the first value is less than 20 and we're going to say this is value of one and similarly we'll just go and add all these clauses so we have seven distinct values so we need seven of these one two three four five six seven and then just provide the value so the next one is 21 to 30 and this has a value of two next one is 31 to 40 and this has a value of three so on and so forth Now here we can see that eight groups are sorted in a decent order the way we would like to see them in a chart. And we now have to repeat the same process for the balance, account balance, the credit scores as well. So the credit scores, uh, the way we will do it, I'm just going to do it quickly without explaining each and every step. You can just Look at age groups and just follow the same method so right click on the main query create a reference query rename it so this one is account balance groups okay so go and select the column which is the account balance column and remove other columns right click on that i mean click on that column go home tab remove rows remove duplicates and if you try to arrange this in ascending order it is showing see 100k first and then 10k then 1k which is not the order we want so we have to go add column conditional column and this is account balance id and we select account balance and we create clauses we're going to create six clauses so the one for which we don't have data at the moment, but if tomorrow we do refresh data, it might be some data in there. So we want to have that category available here in our sorting order. So here, the first one is zero. Next one is um, category of one to one K, one K to 10 K. And then we have 10 K to 100 K. And then we have 100k to 200k and then we have greater than 200k and here one, two three four five and six there we go and we're going to move it here arrange it in ascending order and we can see our account balances are increased uh, set up in the ascending order okay uh, account balance groups next we have the credit scores and we're going to do the same thing with the credit scores so right click the customer data query create a reference query rename it to credit score groups make sure we select the credit scores column and right click remove other columns home remove duplicates see ascending order so see less than equal to 400 should be the first one which is not so again we will do add a conditional column call this Scores 
ID. It's based on credit scores. How many distinct values we have? Six. So we need six clauses. All based on credit scores. There we go. And the first value <coughs> is less than or equal to 400. Next we have is 400, 1 to 500. And then we have 500, 1 to 600. 600, 1 to 700. 700, 1 to 800. And then last but not least, greater than equal to 801. And the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And press OK. So you see here, this one didn't get it uh, here as uh, null. Didn't pick it up as null because it looks like there's a space between greater than and equal to. So I can fix it here, but it's better to fix it in the source. So where we created the conditional column of credit score. So there, what I'm going to do is change this notation, remove this space, press OK. And by doing that, because our credit score groups is based on the reference query, so it references to it, that got corrected here automatically. So that's how, because we referenced it, those steps get applied first and then this happens. So this got fixed automatically here. So now we can sort it, actually change this to whole number, bring it to the first and arrange it in ascending order. Let's look at this. We're going to change the data type here as well. This is whole number and then we already have it arranged and this one also count groups id is a whole number and it's already arranged in ascending order okay so that is that so we have kind of modeled our data to some extent so we created we cleaned our data and then we did this this is part of modeling where we organize this in a way that will help us uh, analyze and visualize this data effectively so once we are happy with whatever preparation we needed to do with the data, then we can just go home and click close and apply. And by doing this step, we are committing all the transformations. They get applied to the entire data set. And then that get data gets imported into our Power BI data model. So here we have the data. So we go to the data view and we can see here all our queries listed here. Now let's go to the model tab here and we can see, let's just make it a bit smaller so we can see all the tables. So we have the customer data, which is our main uh, fact table, which contains all the data, main data. And then we have all these reference tables. So the way you want to look at this model is prepare your reference table on the top, we call them as lookup tables as well. So look up, so you look up from here to there. So that's why lookup tables. So it's best to like to make it easy for you to visualize these relationships. It's better if you do it like this, where you place this on the top. So we have the account balance, credit score groups, and they are all linked with the account balance is linked with the account balance column, the credit scores linked with credit scores column, and then age group. So these have already been pre-detected by Power BI. If I need to, you can go here, look to manage relationships on the home tab, and you can go on any of these relationships and you can edit them. So here it's linked with this account balance, this account balance with this account balance, which is fine. It's a many to one relationship because there's only one value for many of these in this table. So Similarly, we have all the other two relationships here as well. We don't have any date field in our main data. So we don't, we don't need any date table as such for this particular analysis. So now moving on to the next step. Next step is you look at the main facts in there that you want to create some sort of 
calculations and analysis on. So we want to calculate, first look at number of customers. Okay, so that will be one of the measures. So just right click on the customer data table and click new measure. And there we have it. This is where we will type our DAX to create this measure. So we are calling this number of customers. Or you can just say customers as well if you want. If it makes it more sense, sometimes just calling it customers is also fine. How many customers? So just customers, 10K customers, whatever. So what we can do is because we have the customer ID, which is a distinct value for each customer. So we can just use that to count this customer ID from the customer data group in the data table. Close this, enter. And this is a whole number. So you can always check whether you got it right by creating a card and pulling so here, this calculator symbol shows against a measure. So you can see this is a measure customer. So here, 10K customers. So that's that's kind of meaningful, useful here. So that's, I'm happy with that. Next, we want to create a measure that gives me customers that left. So again, customers data here. Customers lost. Okay, and the way we want to do it now is we want to look at the column which is the churned column or churn status column where we the value is churned. So those are the customers that have left. So we need to filter while we are counting. So for that, the best way to do it is using the calculate formula. So what are we going to calculate? We're going to count in the customer data churn status okay we're going to count where the churn status is equal to churned okay and this will also be a whole number so i'm just going to copy this card here and put the customers lost field in here so we can see how many customers were lost 2037 customers were lost next we want to now look at is churn rate which is the customers lost divided by the total number of customers and represented as a percentage so churn rate so we can reuse our measures. So customers lost measure divided by the customers measure, which is the total number of customers. And if we press enter here and then change this to percentage and we'll keep it to one decimal value. So churn rate change it to one decimal value and again I'm just going to copy this card and now here instead of customers lost I'm going to put the churn rate here and it's 20.4 percent so we have the churn rate we have number of customers we have customers lost so those are kind of the main measures so we don't need to look at customers lost here I think this will I'm going to remove this one so we just want to look at churn rate and we want to look at total number of customers. I'm going to minimize this filters pane. We don't need that for now so that we get more working area. We will adjust these visualizations and spacing and all those things to make beautify the report later on. For now, let's just create the visualizations that we need to get the right type of insights. Once we have done that, next thing I want to do is now I want to get a good insight of the data in terms of what sort of distribution is there between male and female, between active and inactive and all those things. So for that, I'm going to use the donut chart. And in this donut chart, we're going to look at first is the gender. 
so gender becomes our legend and the values is the customers so total number of customers gender and I'm going to just quickly format it where I want to say the legend should be top center and the title should be just fine gender and here internal the title I want to place it in the center okay so that is my one of the donut charts and I want to what I want to do is I want to create multiple of these but because it says male and female and it says customers by gender we don't need this title for the uh, legend as well so I'm just going to remove that again to save space so for the legend go and turn off this title so there we have customers by legend male female kind of very very easy to read now now what we do is just because we have already done the formatting just copy paste this particular visual we're going to replace the gender with activity status and we see active and active split of that it's already formatted for us and next one I want to look at is whether they had a credit card or not so for that we look at the credit card status so just put that here and we can see not owned and owned that split is pretty visible next look at by country so what's the split by country so just change the legend here to country now and we have three countries France Germany Spain looks like the biggest number of customers here 5k of these are from France and one more we're going to do is so we have four donor charts here so let's copy paste this one and change this to so we have looked at churn rate churn status country gender maybe let's look at products as well so just add the legend here for products and then here we can speed the split so 5k of the customers are for product one almost 5k 45 percent so that's slightly less than 5000 for product two and there's a very small number for product three only 266 and then even smaller for product four, only 60 customers with product four. So numbers very, very small for those products. So let's make space here for our fourth chart. For now, I'm not worried too much about the spacing. We'll come back to this and adjust the spacing. So there we have those charts. Next, I want to now look at is how does this look at for say by age groups? So the chart we're going to pick is this one here, line and clustered column chart. So click there. The x-axis we are going to put the age groups. So go to the age groups table and put the age groups on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, I'm going to put the customers. How many customers and then we also have a secondary y-axis which is will be a line chart and we're going to put here the churn rate and if I just make it slightly bigger first thing we notice here is that the ages are not sorted correctly so let's go to the um, age groups column select it in the age groups table and then here you should see sort by and select age groups ID and that will sort the age groups now here in this particular uh, chart go to more options we're going to sort the axis by age groups and we want to sort it in ascending order so now we have the age groups sorted in ascending order make it where it's easier to read these ages so I want to keep it in one line there. So less than 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, so on and so forth. We can see number of customers for each age group and also the churn rate. Looks like there's, the churn rate is really high for the age group of 51 to 60. Now, first things first, I just want to change the formatting of this. 
So I want the title, so go to general here, title, make it center aligned. And in the visual category for the legend, again, make it top center. Okay, and the title for the legend, we don't need it, so I'm gonna keep it off. So customers and churn rate by age groups. Now by naming our columns the right way, we don't have to change the titles. They become meaningful automatically. This all depends on how you name your columns and how you name your measures. So here, customers and churn rate by age groups. If you don't, if you feel the customers itself is not meaningful, maybe you can change it to number of customers or total customers, okay? So here, we can come here to the customers measure and change this to number of customers and you press enter and those charts get automatically updated but now you see it takes up a lot more space uh, so again depends on how crunched you are for space sometimes you might have to pick uh, a suitable name for your measure so I'm just going to keep it for customers for now so we have this chart here another chart we're going to create is just for ease and save time I'm just going to copy paste this particular chart and the second chart I'm going to do is I'm going to instead of looking at the age groups we still are going to um, look at total number of customers and churn rate but we're going to look at it from the credit scores perspective okay and again it's not sorted correctly so make sure your credit score column is selected sort by customer sorry the credit score ID and then here for this chart sort the access by credit scores and then sort it in ascending order and there we have it now we can bring it into one line like that that's it so that's the credit scores and um, everything else is fine there and we need one more chart so let's make it closer to this and copy and paste this and the third one is the account balance so now instead of age groups we're going to look at the account balance to just change the x-axis to account balance Again, we need to sort it. So select the account balance column there, sort by account balance ID, and then select more options here, sort the axis by account balance, and then sort the axis in ascending order. So we can see here, zero, 1K to 10K, 10K to 100K, so on and so forth. And I need to address the space there. So that's Pretty much most of the charts we wanted to do here are done. I'm just going to make this one a bit more smaller. Okay, so as I said, most of the charts are done now. Another thing I want to do here is I want to provide a drop down where somebody can just look for customers which have been lost. So. For that, we're going to provide a slicer, okay? And the slicer is based on churn status, okay? And it's got two values. And I'm just going to go to the formatting here and change the slicer settings instead of vertical list to drop down and make this small. And, and also, we can reduce the width as well here. We don't need it to be this wide because it's only two names in there and bring it here to the top okay next is also i want to create a gauge here which shows us the churn rate and look at it from what's the maximum churn rate minimum churn rate what's the target churn rate and then how we are doing against that so if i bring in the gauge visual we need the values we need is we need the actual value which will be our churn rate measure. We need the minimum churn rate, maximum churn rate, and we also need the target churn rate. The easiest option for this is if you go to the transform data, 
open Power Query again. And then in the customer data, if we go and add column and we just add a custom column. So, so we need three columns. Min churn rate and this is going to be zero. So, okay. And this will be a percentage. So it will show 0% there. Next one will be another custom column. This will be max churn rate. And this will be one because we're going to show it as percentage. So one becomes 100%. So let's change the data time to percentage. That's 100%. And also we're going to add the target, which for this one here is say 15%. And this is just an assume number for here. It will depend on a real business, what they're, and depending on the uh, business sector, the churn rate will vary in terms of the target, which is a good such so for some industries, like say utility companies, and there's less choice available so the churn rate is low whereas say uh, mobile phone providers the churn rate is high where people shop around and change their mobile providers so it depends on the nature of business and the sector so this target will vary but for now we are saying it is 0.15 so it becomes 15 percent and again change the data type to percentage and now come to home and close and apply okay so now let's put the populate the values for this particular visual so the actual value here is the churn rate which is 20.4% 4% the minimum so let's find the minimum churn rate so that will go there and instead of sum we have to change this to minimum and the maximum churn rate let's change this to maximum so it's 100 percent and the target churn rate let's put that here and change that to also minimum maximum whatever it's, it doesn't make a difference because it will just be one one value okay and look at the title there meaningless anyway we don't need that it's self-explanatory so we'll go to the format visuals go to general and turn the title off we don't need it let's make it smaller and see if we can fit it here at the top okay there we have it so that's that's that i think we're pretty much done in terms of what we wanted to create here now i can look at um, the churn rate so if i just want to see mail so mail is the dark blue one here if i click there for mail customers the maximum churn rate is in the category of 51 to 60 year olds which is 47.5 percent pretty bad but the overall churn rate for male population is 16.5. And similarly, the churn rate for the, uh, as per credit scores, the highest is for you know, people with really low credit scores, less than 400. And for the account balance, the churn rate is high for customers with really high or the highest account balance. So people with more than 200k in their bank accounts they shop around because you know they have money in their accounts they want the best interest rates and best facilities and best customer service so they shop around so uh, so that's that's what we can look at from gender perspective so now this number and this number is redundant so it's like showing twice so we i'm just going to remove this visual we don't need that and we have this here maybe we'll change the order these two visuals and bring this here this formatting 
kind of thing is the last thing you do. First, you create your visuals, look at whether it's giving you the required meaningful information or not. That's the most important thing you want to do first. Okay, now in terms of making this visual beautiful, uh, we want to look at, go here, view, and we can pick up some sort of theme from here, pre-built theme. So let's, let's pick up this theme, which is a dark theme. Um, so that's that, but maybe I don't want a dark theme for this one. Uh, again, depends on sort of what sort of visualization you're creating. Uh, you can try different themes from here. It just push button anyway. It doesn't take long to try different visuals. I think I like these colors, the green and this one, but I'm going to change this. So you can modify a theme quite easily, basically. So if you have applied a theme, you like the colors, but I just want to slightly modify these th themes. So you can go customize current theme and you can select these colors. So this green one, I want to make this into like a rust color. So let's change this here to a dark kind of rusty color. And this dark blue, I want to change this to a almost a gray but a dark gray in quite near to black and the third color i want to make it a bit of orange but a light orange that sort of orange okay and also the page you can change the page background i don't want it white i want a a light sort of that sort of color and I'm going to copy this code and change the page background also to this. Okay. And also the visuals, we want to leave it white color. Uh, transparency, we don't want it to be transparent. So zero transparency. Don't want any borders. And uh, if you want to switch on the borders, you can and make them round. So again, change this color to white and then you can specify a border. So for all visuals, it's five pixels. We can apply some sort of header, background colors and all those things we don't need. Text colors, this particular theme doesn't allow you to change the text colors and now the filters pane, you can filter cards, you can supply filter background, you know, all those things for now. Let's let's just see what happens when we just click apply. So there we have our report now. The background for our charts basically for our visualizations is 100% transparent. So let's go here and go to general, go to effects, change the background make it 100% white and change the transparency to zero. And there we have it. So that's what it looks like with that. But now with this one, the legend is hidden. We want the legend to be visible as well. Okay. And the title color is not great. Actually, it's too light. So let's make the title color a bit dark and there we go so that's our chart one of the charts and once you're happy with the formatting of this one you can go select the chart go to home ribbon click on format painter and there you go automatically you can apply the formatting to other visuals so you don't have to individually do this for each chart so there we go we have applied the formatting for all three visuals pretty quickly another thing is we want to apply the same formatting for the this visual as well so now let's do that and that. Okay, so visuals are ready. Uh, now we want to look at the header as well. So for the header part, I'm just going to go insert uh, shapes and we're going to insert a rectangle at the top. You can beautify your report as much as you want. You can spend a lot of time on creating and visualizing, but the main idea is not to learn the beautification of these reports. So you can now go to format here and send this to back. And also 
I want to go for this shape and change the style background to white okay and the border I want to change the border also to white okay I want to reduce the height of this one so we have some sort of space there in between and see what it looks like let's change this okay there we go so now we can see what these things uh, in terms of the cards and other things that we have put up what they look like on this visual so we can make it smaller or bigger adjust the spacing and make this also a bit bigger if there is space for this one the churn status looks really really small so slicer header I want to make it slightly bigger 10 maybe 10 is fine and the font color let's keep it consistent change it to that one okay and also I want to put a title for my report and we're going to call it churn analysis and make this text uh, size say 32 change the color to orange make it bold let's just change the font to sigri and maybe actually I can change this to bold let's see what it looks like yeah, I think that looks better. So, uh, change the size here of this text box and then drag it here to the top. And then I'm going to add another text box and put here uh, bank customer data. And we're going to change the size so to 12 and change the color to this gray make this box smaller and bring it here under this okay that's what it looks like and now next thing is we want to make these of the same size so maybe in the properties to get a bit more control over the sizing uh, the height is 254 we can actually reduce the height to say 245 and we can change the width to say 244 actually let's change it to 245 245 so it's a square so 245 45 45 45 245 and last but not the least 245 245 so there we have it if we align these uh, sort of make sure we align these to the edges there and then if I select all these visualizations, all five, go to format and then align, and I will say align middle, and then I want to distribute horizontally so that the spacing is equal between them. And there you go, that's what it looks like now. Now these three, again, we can increase the height slightly of each one just to so that the spacing between these visual kind of remains consistent. I think that's fine. So let's look at the general properties here. So the height is 340 and the width is 433. Now we need some spacing between these. So this one I can reduce the width without affecting the graph too much. So let's see how much I can reduce it. 
without making it completely unreadable. I think that's fine. This one can move here, so we can increase the width here as well. So it's, again, you can be very precise with these measurements. I'm just doing it quickly just to save time. I think pretty much there. Another thing I would like to do is just add some separation between these three things. So again, go to insert, go to shapes and insert a line. And I'm going to change the rotation to 90 degrees. So it becomes a vertical line, make it a bit smaller, reduce this width here. We don't need it to be this wide and then bring it here to the top. Again, the height needs to be reduced further. I think that's fine. Make it a bit smaller from the top. I think that looks pretty good. Just copy, paste it, and put one here in between these two, and then put one here between these two here. And for all these, I can select all, all of these and change the alignment. So again, format, align, and we want to align the middles. And there we go, that's what it looks like. Maybe I just want to add another thing here is make this line show up here at the end make it slightly bigger to map the box and also the border let's change the thickness a bit and now what I will do is I'll move this text bit away from it looks a bit dark okay the visual border I don't need that change that to light let's do the same here for this one and this one and this one so there we have it that's our chart we can test it so if I want to look at data only for customers which are churned it doesn't look very meaningful but not churned you can see and also you can see how if I only want to look at people who own the credit card, you can select here. You can see the all overall um, sort of churn rate is 20.2, which is less than the overall average. 7,000 customers, 7, customers own it, but the churn rate is highest for 51 to 60. So it looks like the churn rate is highest for 51 to 60 customers across many of these factors. And churn rate is high for people with really bad credit scores less than 400 and this varies depending on what we are looking at so now let's look at people who don't own a credit card for them again the highest is for the ages is always 51 to 60 looks like and credit score but if they don't own then again one of the things is people with high account balance looks like they shop around and switch around their accounts so age groups 51 to 60, low credit scores, and people with really high account balance, more than 200K in their account balance. Uh, also, let's look at the products as well. So these product, product one, it's 27.7. The churn rate is high for this product one. Obviously it constitutes a big percentage of the customers, more than 50%, but the factors are same there, if you see. For product two, it's kind of same, 51 to 60, all that. And, but for customers, product two, a lot of customers between this range of 1K to 10K account balance, 
the churn rate is 100%. So need to look at that, why that is, and see how those customers could be retained. And if we really makes it sense to retain those customers as well. So how many of those customers are active and inactive is another thing. So the big chunk um, is, so if I was to select this, inactive customers as well, you can see now, again, the overall percentage 26.9. So, so you can play around with this. So the business user can now play around with this and form a, form a sort of look at what's what needs to be addressed, what are the key factors and what they can do about it. Also, for this chart, you can try the area chart as well. Um, so that looks pretty good. So if you see here, when you have two axes, you can look at area chart. Another thing to look at is the scale here for these uh, for the secondary axis. So it's starting with 0k, but this one only goes up to 60. So it looks they are all same, but this goes to 100%, this only goes to 60%. Maybe it's better if we fix that. So if you go and change the secondary axis, the minimum should be 0 and the maximum should be 100%. Similarly, this one also, let's fix this instead of auto to 0 and this to 1. And the last one also zero, and this one also one. Okay, so there we have it. And also, let's add uh, markers, makes it look better. Markers on. That's it. That's the what I wanted to do in terms of the report. Now you can, once you're happy with it, make sure you save your work so save call it uh, customer return analysis i'm going to say here demo save it and then um, i'm already logged into power bi service with my account uh, if you are not you can create a free account and then once you're signed in you can click here to publish and I'll show you where you want to publish it. I want to publish it under my workspace. Click select. And now this report is being pushed onto Power BI service. And once that's done, you can click here on open. And this will open this particular report on the Power BI service. And now from here, you can actually export it you can share it so you can share it within your organization there are other things you can copy a link send it across so permissions and all those things there's there's a whole thing about it which is not part of this particular dashboard the idea was to learn customer churn analysis but you can do so many things you can also export this as a pdf if you want you can also create dashboard out of this so this is a report this is not a dashboard so create a dashboard you select what you want to include and just pin it and by doing that you keep on creating a dashboard we'll do that in a separate video but for this one i think that's what we wanted to cover uh, last but not the least let's rename this to churn analysis so this report page and you can also push these changes so by pressing save and it will say here and then when you press select it will say that it's an existing report and you can replace it with this new one so that the tab name is also correct and it's updated on the online report as well. So there we are. We started with raw data in a CSV file and understood what customer churn analysis is. And then we cleaned our data, we modeled it, we analyzed it, we created our measures, and then we visualized it. And finally, we uploaded it onto the Power BI service for sharing. So basically, we followed the end to end process step by step and created our customer churn analysis dashboard. I hope you have enjoyed learning this. Make sure you follow along, use the practice files provided in the description, create your own version and upload it onto the GitHub or somewhere, create your own repository of projects. My mission is to help you learn this practical way so that you become confident of working with any type of data, cleaning it, preparing it, modeling it, analyzing and visualizing it. You should be confident with the entire process and using Power BI as a tool to achieve that, okay? So if you have any more questions or comments regarding this video, do share them 
and if you like what you learned today make sure you subscribe to the channel to get notified about the future videos and also share it further if you find and if you think that somebody else can benefit from it that's what i'm doing here i am creating sharing this knowledge for the benefit of everybody and you can help spread this further so that more people can benefit from it okay so thanks for watching and i will see you next time